Hello Newtonians! In this video, we are going to learn the basic elements of engineering drawing. We are going to take a detailed look into fonts, line types, drawing border, title block, notes, and BOM. As we already discussed in introduction to the engineering drawing video, engineering drawing is a unified language that engineers use to communicate. The rules for creating engineering drawings, communication, are defined by a standards organization, for example, ISO and ASME. Furthermore, we showed you how the usual detailed and assembly drawing looks like. In the past, engineering drawings were created by hand, and today we are using CAD software. For that reason, we will focus more on the rules applied for the engineering drawing created with the CAD software. Of course, in software like Autodesk Fusion 360, you can choose your preferred standard for drawing creation, and most of these rules are already implemented. However, I believe that the experts in their field of work should be familiar with the concepts and rules they use daily. With that being said, let us move forward and learn more about the basic elements of engineering drawing. Font The font types used on engineering drawings for CAD applications are defined by ISO 3098 to 51997. According to ISO, CA and CB font types should be used for CAD applications. Usually, on the drawing generated in the CAD software, we can use any font that we want, but sometimes different projects and companies will require standardized fonts. The uppercase letter height can be 1.8 mm, 2.5 mm, 3.5 mm, 5 mm, 7 mm, 10 mm, 14 mm, and 20 mm. Types of the lines Types of the lines on the engineering drawing are defined by ISO 128 to 22022. The line types and their regular uses are Continuous wide line is used for visible edges, visible outlines, and arrow lines for representing sections and views. Continuous narrow line is used for hatching lines, dimension lines, extension lines, viewing lines, bending lines, thread lines, leader lines, and reference lines. Dashed wide line is used for indication of permissible areas of surface treatment. Dashed narrow line is used for hidden lines and hidden outlines. Long dash dotted wide line is used for position of cross-sectional planes, indication of limited required areas of surface for treatment. Long dash narrow line is used for center lines and lines of symmetry. CAD software already defines the type of lines based on the preferred standard. But, of course, if you need to adjust the type of lines and thickness, you can change them in software settings. Drawing border The drawing border defines the limit of the formal drawing area. Basically, it means that every content relevant to this drawing must be inside this border. The borders are defined by ISO 5457-1999. The main elements of a drawing border are Trimming mark Trim format Grid reference border The frame of the drawing space Drawing space Untrimmed format Trimming marks The trimming marks are used in cases when untrimmed paper sizes are used. Trimming can be done automatically or by hand. The trimming marks are created on the edges of the standard paper sizes in the form of two rectangles 10 times 5 mm. The untrimmed sheet sizes are used when, for example, we want to allow printers to bleed beyond the edge and give the printer a small amount of space to account for the movement of the paper. Personally, I have created thousands of drawings in my career, and not once have I had to trim the paper or send the drawing to the supplier in paper format. Trim format, paper size. Paper sizes are defined by ISO 216207. The engineering drawing should be made on the smallest possible paper size, allowing clarity and resolution. The most used paper sizes are A0, A1, A2, A3, and A4. Grid Reference System The grid reference system is used to easily locate different elements of the engineering drawing. It is divided into fields where the vertical fields are defined with letters and the horizontal field with numbers. In that way, it is easy to point out any detail on the drawing. Let us look at the following example. Imagine that you are in a meeting with your team and want to point out one dimension of the drawing you are unsure about. You could easily say that it is located on the left view, and it measures the distance from the edge of the part to the hole. That is great if your team is composed only of technical members. The easiest way to point this dimension is to say, if you would look into the field D2, you can see a 15 mm distance between the edge and the center of the hole. This drawing is simple, and you might think this is unnecessary. 
Now imagine an A0 paper sheet with six main views, four sections, and ten details. Using the grid reference system makes it much easier to locate different drawing elements without spending too much time looking for them. The inner line of the drawing border should be moved 20 millimeters from the left edge of the paper and 10 millimeters from the other three sides. The frame limiting the drawing space should be a continuous line of 0.7 millimeters in width. The length of the grid reference border field is 50 millimeters, starting from the middle of the drawing border. The size of the letter should be 3.5 millimeters. The left and right fields, vertical fields, contain letters with capital letters arranged alphabetically, starting from the top. The top and bottom sides, horizontal fields, contain numbers, starting from the left side. For the A4 paper size, the grid reference border is only shown on the top and the right side. Centering marks. The centering marks are used for positioning the engineering drawings when the engineering drawings are reproduced or microfilmed. These marks should be created in the center of the reference field, and they should be created with thick 0.7 mm continuous lines, 5 mm from the frame of the drawing area. I believe that most of us will never use microfilms. Title Block The title block contains all the relevant information needed to identify the drawing, example, part number, part name, drawing owner, designer name, etc. Furthermore, a title block defines other relevant information, example, material, standard, perspective type, scale, page number, etc. The title block is defined by ISO 7200-2004. Data fields in the title block can be divided into two groups, mandatory M and optional O. Mandatory title block fields are legal owner, identification number, date of issue, sheet number, title, approval person, creator, and document type. Optional title block fields are revision index, number of sheets, language code, supplementary title, responsible department, technical reference, and paper size. Other data fields are presented outside the title block only when used, for example, scale, projection symbol, general tolerances, and surface texture requirements. Let us now look into each individual title block field that you could find on the engineering drawing. Applicable standards. It is common to note on the drawing to define applicable standards. Usually, it is standard praxis to define applicable tolerancing standards on the drawing. For general tolerances, ISO 2768 to 1989 is generally used. This standard specifies general dimensional tolerances, and if the dimensional tolerance is exactly as in the standard, it is not necessary to define it on the drawing. When referring to the standard, it is also necessary to state the desired class. Example, ISO 2768 MK refers to the medium class. Many different standards can be defined on the drawing. For example, you can define surface texture according to ISO 21920 or indication and dimensioning of undefined edges according to ISO 13715. Which standard you should put on your drawing depends on the industry and manufacturing process you are using. 2. Projection Symbol the projection symbols are defined by ISO 5456 to 21996. They describe what type of projection was used, first angle projection or third angle projection. 3. Units Considering that we have an international and imperial system of units, it is desirable to define applicable units on the drawing. 4. Scale Imagine that we must create a drawing of the car. It would be challenging to draw a complete car on one of the standard paper formats in its actual dimensions. In case when we have big objects, or small ones, we scale them to fit on the drawing. The scale represents the ratio between the same sizes in the drawing and reality. The natural scale would be displayed on the drawing in its actual size, and it would be marked 1 colon 1. That means that 1 millimeter on the drawing is equal to 1 in reality. If we would like to enlarge the object two times, we would use a scale of 2 to 1. That would indicate that 2 millimeters on the drawing are equal to 1 millimeter in reality. If we would like to reduce part for 5 time, we would use a scale of 1 to 5. This would mean that 1 millimeter on the drawing is equal to 5 millimeters in reality. The scales are defined by ISO 5455-1979. The natural scale is 1 to 1. The enlargement scale can be 5 to 1, 50 to 1, 2 to 1, 20 to 1, and 10 to 1. The reduction scale can be 1 to 2, 1 to 20, 1 to 200, 1 to 5, 1 to 50, 1 to 10, 1 to 100, etc. 5. 
legal owner. In this field, usually, the company name is displayed. It could be the company's name, initials, or logo. The remark is added with the company name to protect the drawing from freely being shared with the competition. For example, this document is the property of the Newtonian world, and as such, it is strictly confidential. The document is supplied with the understanding that it will not be disclosed to third parties without the prior consent of Newtonian world. 6. Material In order to manufacture a part, we need a raw material that will be shaped into the desired form. In the title block, we can define which material type and color, or finishing, we want to attribute to this part. 7. Revision Index In an ideal world, the mechanical design engineer will design the part, create a drawing, and send it to a supplier. After that, the manufactured part will arrive and perfectly fit into the assembly. In the real world, the last step is not necessarily true. Usually, the mechanical designer first will create a prototype. Every individual part will first be inspected on its form, then assembled, and its function will be inspected. If individual parts are not designed correctly, or the assembly is not designed correctly, the mechanical design engineer has to introduce changes to the drawing. For the proper drawing revision tracking, ECR, ECN, and ECO exists. We are marking the revision using letters A to Z, E, G, A, 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 B, etc. We can alternatively use numbers 1, 2, 3. These numbers indicate that the original design has been updated somehow. If the part is significantly changed, so it is no longer interchangeable with the older versions, assigning a new number is better than creating a new revision level. The assembly drawing defines different components with the ballon containing an identification number. For this reason, I prefer to use a letter for marking the revision index. Some companies prefer revision clouds to highlight the areas where change was applied since the previous drawing revision. 8. Responsible Department The responsible department refers to the internal department inside the company. This can be a department name or department code. 9. Creator the creator refers to the name of the person that created the drawing. 10. Date of issue. The date of the issue represents the date when the part was officially released for the first time. Every revision after the original design should also have a date of release. 11. Approval person. The approval person is the name of the person who approved the document. 12. Document type. The document type states what type of document we are looking at. In this case it can be. Component drawing, assembly drawing, tabular drawing, fabrication drawing, outline drawing, other industries slash company related drawings. 13. Document status. Depending on the internal documentation management procedure in the company, a document can be at different stages of product development in different statuses draft, approved, reviewed, obsolete, etc. 14. Identification number. The identification number or the part number is the main mean of identifying the part or assembly. Inside the company, no part or assembly should have the same part number, i.e., every part number should be unique. Different companies use different methods of assigning part numbers. Some companies use software for automatic assigning, like PDM, others do it manually, define it by product family, etc. The naming scheme is usually defined inside the company. The identification slash part number should not exceed 16 characters. 15. Title or the part name. The title or the part name is usually given for convenience and is linked to the part's function or appearance. For example, welding flange, plate, main holder plate, etc. Although the different parts can have the same part name, unique part numbers, identification numbers, will still differentiate them. Supplementary title. The supplementary title is used to add more information to the part. For example, we can use the product family name or the assembly name for which this part is used. 16. Paper size. The paper size refers to the paper size we use for drawing creation. 17. Sheet number. In reality, some parts are fairly complex to fit on just one sheet. Depending on the paper size used for drawing creation, a drawing can contain many sheets. On the drawing, the current sheet number should be displayed. Number of sheets. The number of sheets represents the final number of drawing sheets. Notes. The notes specify other equally important information needed for complete drawing specifications. 
For example, overall surface finish or surface finish specified for a specific surface, material, color, reference to CAD model, etc. In case when material is defined in notes, in the title block in the material data field, should be written C notes. Notes are usually listed numerically, each requirement listed individually, on the same part of the drawing. We can say that the notes are added whenever we want something done to the part, and we do not have another way to specify it. Examples No sharp edges All internal edges to be free of burrs Part to be cleaned and degreased when completed If the notes are not general in nature, we can use flag notes. The flag notes are used to apply indications on specific geometry or dimension. The choice of symbol can be specific to the company or the industry. Part lists or bill of materials, BOM. The bill of materials lists the subassemblies, parts, and materials required for building the assembly. The parts list or BOM can be added directly to the drawing or provided with the assembly drawing as a separate list. The difference between the parts list and BOM is that the parts list defines only one structural level. Data fields generally defined in the BOM are Item number, position, defines the part position in the BOM. Each part is identified with a balloon containing the corresponding number. For example, item number 1 will have the corresponding balloon with the number 1 inside it. A leader with the arrowhead end is used when pointing at the outline of a part. A leader line with the dot end is used when it points to the surface of a part. Identification number or part number. Quantity, how many of these particular parts are used in this drawing? Information about the suppliers for the purchase parts. Material identification, the material used to produce the part. Weight. Overall dimensions. Revision index. Type etc. The part lists or BOM can contain some of this or all this information. Some companies do not place part lists or BOMs on the assembly drawing, they create it on a separate sheet. This depends on the company standards. In your engineering praxis, you will encounter engineering drawings on a daily basis. The elements listed here will be defined, right or wrong, on each. As a real expert, you want to ensure that you communicate the right message every time someone checks your drawing. You are not only communicating design details on your drawing, you also communicate your expertise and your company brand. Considering the advances in CAD software, you do not need to create and or implement these elements every time you create a drawing. In this case, you will create drawing templates that you will use whenever you start drawing. Therefore, understand these elements and implement them correctly in your drawing templates. Did you learn anything new in this video? Let us know in the comments below. Do you like our videos? Then, give us a thumb up comment, and share it with your friends, colleagues, and on your social media channels. And if you want to become a part of the Newtonians, make sure to subscribe to our channel.